A little word to the wise, to our Lions of Liberty listeners. Today's show gets a little bit risque, so you may want to put the earmuffs on the kids, kick them outside, make a play date, whatever you need to do. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land, here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Electric Liberty Land, everybody. This is episode number three, which, of course, if you've been listening along and playing the What Number is the Podcast game, means you can find it at lionsofliberty.com forward slash E L L three. Yes, fantastic, I know. I also want to encourage everybody listening right now go to Facebook. Type in Lions of Liberty Forum. You can find it. You can join it. As long as you don't look crazy, we'll add you on there. We have a lot of discussions going on there. A lot of stories being published that we're going to talk about here on this very podcast. So you can get ahead of the game, essentially, and be be in the know. Be one of the cool kids. Now, last episode, I said guys a lot. I just, you know, it's like I was brought up being like, hey, you guys, kind of like the old uh, the old Goonies thing. And I just read something today where, you know, we're not supposed to use the word guys anymore. Because, uh, you know, because it's sexist. So I'm actually not going to try not to use the word guys, but I said it enough where I'm going to try a little bit not to use it, but uh, not for the reasons that the PC police and the thought police want. Now, again, uh, I'm going to kind of adopt a little bit of the format from last show that I used, where uh, I want to address a couple things at the top of the show before I bring on my guest, which is going to be the one and the only Johnny Rocket from the Johnny Rocket launch pad. Uh, one of my favorite guys, hilarious Good friend of Liberty, good friend of ours. So he's going to be joining us in just a little bit. But a couple things off the top. Uh, I want to address the quote-unquote fake news that I talked about last show, which, of course, is the second episode where I had John Odermatt from Felony Friday on. Uh, we talked about the Trump stuff that came out, the hacking allegations and the ties to Russia and uh, the quote-unquote golden shower gate, which, you know, somebody posted and said, oh, you know, this episode has fake news in it. Now... At the time of recording, this had just come out, this report, and uh, although I did say pretty prominently that I thought it was all BS uh, when it did come out and that I didn't really believe it, you got to address these things as they happen. You know, I don't know. We None of us know, and nobody still knows, because basically we had one report come out from 4chan saying that they created this Golden Showers hoax, which I, I believe, I believe that. Um, they're pretty notorious, and I hope it's true. And that uh, the rest of the stuff is cobbled together from who knows where. So, yeah, it probably is all garbage, but I want to address that. Uh, I also want to address a couple other things really quickly. And one of them is that I want to talk about Obama's farewell speech. Now, again, I'm a couple days late to this because of the way these podcasts work out time-wise. But there's a couple notes that I want to hit just talking about God, it's just, number one, the man's got no humility whatsoever. The speech was basically a look how great I am speech through and through. But some of the stuff in it was so ridiculous, so over the top that it just, it has to be addressed. I have to play some of these clips just to, to talk about and provide a little bit of a counterpoint to the ridiculousness that is Barack Obama and his, uh, his ridiculous race baiting in, in these speeches. So let me play a quick clip right here. This is pretty early on. Uh, and you guys, if you haven't heard it yet, get ready to be, uh, to be very perturbed. If every economic issue is framed as a struggle between a hardworking white middle class and an undeserving minority, then workers of all shades are going to be left fighting for scraps while the wealthy withdraw further into their private enclaves. Tell me this. How many economic issues do we couch in that particular language? How many are ever couched in that language, especially in the past 50 years, where we say, okay, yes, let's, okay, what, let, let's see here. How's, how's this going to affect the white, uh, privileged middle class and, uh, and keep down, uh, keep down the brown people? Cause that's what our primary goal is. I mean, are you serious, Obama? And, and you're you're putting it out there, couching it in these terms and, and painting. Again, Democrats love to paint people with this wide, ridiculous brush saying, you're all racists. And clearly, you only have your own self-interest in mind, which, of course, 
is hilarious because the left is known for identity politics. That's all they are. It is identity politics. What affects me? What color is my skin? What's that? What's going to be best for me? And I know there's some of that on both sides, of course. Everybody, I think, innately is going to have something in them programmed in, maybe genetically, I don't know, where they say, okay, what do I look like? I'm probably going to identify with people like me. What's best for me and people who look like me? That ain't right necessarily, but there's probably something on some level that there is truth to that. But that doesn't mean that only people on the right do that, Obama. And that doesn't mean that every economic issue automatically has built-in racism tied onto every little nook and, and cranny of it. It just it, it, it's, it puts me at a loss for words when you hear this kind of rhetoric coming out of him. And at a farewell speech, at a speech that's supposed to bring the country together, you have Obama going out there and providing more divisiveness. And telling people, hey, by the way, any time that an economic issue is discussed, they're coming to get you if you're a minority. That you don't deserve what you're going to get. That you don't deserve a fair shake. This this concept of fairness that the left is always pushing through. It's not fair unless you get a, a share of everything else that people more rich than you have. It's not fair that you didn't have the exact same opportunities that everybody else had. But you know what? You did have the exact same opportunities. It's just, you know what? Some people are more successful than others because maybe they worked harder. Some people are more successful because, yes, they had advantages in life that you might not have had. But there's people that are the same color of their skin that didn't have those same advantages. It doesn't mean that you're undeserving in the eyes of white, middle class, or upper class legislators. Everybody's not out to get you. Conspiracy theory Obama here. Explain that. If we're unwilling to invest in the children of immigrants just because they don't look like us, we will diminish the prospects of our own children because those brown kids will represent a larger and larger share of America's workforce. The damn brown kids again. <laughs> God, can you imagine any president getting away with that? The language, the brown kids. Oh, my God. I can't say brown kids and not, not even the president. I guess you got to work your way up to you get that kind of privilege where you can just throw around the phrase brown kids all the time and uh, and have people be OK with it. Honey, what are you uh, what are you going for uh, for Halloween this year? Oh, but he goes, one of them brown kids. You know, that brown kid from the Little Rascals. He goes, that guy. What was his name? I don't know. But again, it's just more of the same. Saying that, okay, uh, anybody white doesn't care about anybody black. Doesn't care about anybody Asian. Doesn't care about anybody that's Muslim or mixed. Obama clearly thinks this way. He's clearly thought this way the last eight years. That he's been. And as a, somebody that's a mixed race, you would think Obama would have a little bit more compassion for the fact that, you know, not everybody thinks that way. Some people actually believe in rights for everybody. They believe in human rights and natural rights that are innate to every human. And they don't look at people and say, OK, that guy's kill, the color of his skin is different than me. So he's automatically uh, less than me, doesn't deserve as much. And like I said earlier, look, on some level, probably people just because it's genetically inbred in us may have an unconscious vested interest in what they perceive to be better for people like them. Now, that, of course, goes away the more time you spend with people that are not like you. And as we know, you put somebody one color into a uh, an environment or another culture, they adopt that culture that they're in. So there's no real identity politics that should be involved with a certain skin color or identity. It doesn't mean people are evil. It doesn't mean they're going out of their way to make this happen. And some people probably are going to have the opposite reaction, where they're going to say, I want to go out of my way to help people of a different skin color than me. You have people that say, I actually am more attracted to people of a different skin color than me, or I have a particular fondness for people of a different skin color than me. You can't just say unilaterally that everybody thinks that people that are brown kids or yellow kids aren't deserving of the same rights. So, hey, Obama, your identity politics are showing because you're a man who's got non-white skin, okay? And yet here you are talking about immigrants looking different than us. Well, guess what? I'm a white guy. Uh, and guess what? A ton of immigrants that come into this country are. They're white. And I mean, think about the previous downtrodden masses. They were all Irish or they were Polish or they were German or they're Russians. Now we've got a ton of Serbians coming into the country and all that. You know, they, they fleed the war and they came to our country. So give me a break. You can't just automatically think in your mind because you're brown that they're all brown kids. 
So those of us who are looking at immigrants don't necessarily say, okay, that one's white, that one's black, that one's yellow, and, uh, and think of them differently. No, they're all the same. They're all immigrants. They all have rights. Here's one more clip, and then I'm going to move on to something else. If you're tired of arguing with strangers on the Internet, try talking with one of them in real life. Hilarious, Obama. Because if there's one person who made zero effort at any point during his eight years to talk to anybody that didn't agree explicit with him, it was Obama. Uh, Let's just wrap this little Obama part up with this quote. I've got a pen and I've got a phone. And I can use that pen to sign executive orders and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. So thanks, Obama, for those words of wisdom. Uh, Do as you say, not as you do. And, oh, God, you know, see, I got to throw out a commercial here, but this is the second week in a row. We've only had three shows. I got to talk to Mark about this because I need to find out who's advertising on the show before I start talking about the topics at the top of the show. Uh, You're not going to believe this, but, uh, well, here you go. Here's our sponsor. I'm President Barack Obama. As you know, I'll be leaving office later this week. But what you don't know is that I'm an avid fisherman. Not just for liberal sucker fish, but for real fish, too. So I'm opening up a bait shop in my native Chicago, and I hope that you will stop by. It's called Obama's Race Bait and Tackle. And we'll have all the race bait that you need to sucker in progressive fish and fish-minded folk. We've got minority minnows who can't seem to get a fair shake in this economy. We've got Mexican nightcrawlers who I deported in the millions, but I've kept some around for convenient reference. And don't forget about our white wigglers who, as we all know, are responsible for all of the world's problems. So come on down to Obama's Race Bait and Tackle. Open January 21st. Well, that is what it is. So make uh, make sure you guys head down to Obama's Race Bait and Tackle should you need anything for, uh, for progressive fishing. Uh, Occupied Democrats has most of that, but I think he's trying to corner the market in another way. Well, let's bring in a guest. What do you say? Everybody, please uh, welcome my guest today, a good friend of the podcast. As I mentioned earlier in the show, is going to be visiting us here today, Mr. Johnny Rocket Adams from the Johnny Rocket Launchpad. What's up, Johnny? Hey, Brian. Thanks a lot for having me here, man. I'm just honored to be here for, I don't know what episode of your show, but it's Only a new episode show. episode three. I know. Three. Well, I'm honored to be on episode three, man. It's well, awesome. It's Thank you so much. Have you. Yeah, man. Uh, welcome, welcome. And people, of course, can go and find you guys at johnnyrocketlaunchpad.com. That's um, right. That's iTunes. Right. Uh, and of course, if you're in the Seattle area, you're on the, you're on actual radio radio, right? <laughs> We well not like radio radio but internet radio it's um it's cool cuz we can cuss on these internet radio stations but one of the the first one we actually ever got on was NWCZ radio right right and they're they're near and dear to our hearts so they're great and uh I'm just honored to be here with the my third favorite comedian of all time who were the uh, first two uh Doug Stanhope and Brian Regan so oh, all I love right. those guys Brian love Regan's guys. all clean isn't he he is, but that's what I think the beauty about him is, is just because he is clean, but he's great at being clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's I'm, great. I mean, I'm he's with great. you, man. Yeah. He, Brian Regan's hilarious. And yeah, I'm always, I always marvel at it. You know, it's like, I like to think that I can be funny without cursing, uh, but you know, it's so easy to lapse into the, into the cursing and the, and it I'm is. a blue guy, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally. I love Stanhope though because he is so blue. You know, oh, yeah, <laughs> you got uh, you're, you're on both sides. You're you're libertarian esque in your uh, in your comedy as well. You like it. You like both sides of the spectrum. <laughs> I do, I do. I appreciate a good laugh, but I also enjoy a good dirty joke. So yeah, absolutely. That's all like all anybody can ask for in a, in a man is that he can uh, can enjoy everything. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All the luxuries in life, sir. Bingo, baby. Are you are you uh, imbibing any luxuries tonight? I'm not. I'll be honest. But, I, I uh, am. I'm actually drinking a Bloody Mary. Wow. Late at night. It let, yes. Do not let convention define Johnny Adams drinking habits. Mm-mm. No, normally it's beer, but we ran out of it. So um, I had some vodka and some Bloody Mary uh, mix. So I've 
garnished myself a luxurious tall boy of Bloody Mary mix and vodka. So here I am. It's making me. It's giving. It's giving me the delirium tremens thinking about it because I'm taking off the month of January drinking. So I'm. Uh, I just. I'll just oh, wow. I'll just dream about your Bloody Mary. I mean, I dream about you usually, but uh, the Bloody that's, Mary adds a whole nice new level. You, but I don't want to know any more about that. <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, good segue to t- let's jump into a very, very popular segment. You know, they used to have the Rand pluses and minuses show here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Yes. But, uh, you know, this show, Electric Liberty Land, has given me the opportunity to bring back the segment. And so for the very first time, let's play Rand pluses and minuses with Johnny Adams. Are you ready, Johnny? You ready to play the game? I am ready. All right. Our first story that's going to come uh, come swinging in at you is that Rand Paul has uh, he's been very active lately. I, I will say that the first thing I want to address though is something that uh, actually has to do with a man who I guess kind of we kind of like him, but mostly hate him, and that's Bernie Sanders. Um, I won't go into the numerous reasons to hate him, but one of the things that Bernie actually has that libertarians can find attractive is that he wants to make it far easier, or I guess make it legal, to import Canadian drugs, which, as you know, are much, much cheaper than our domestic brands. And he had a uh, a bill that he put tried to put through, which unfortunately failed pretty miserably, by the way, but did have support from one Rand Paul. Now, what do you think about that? What do you think about Rand Paul siding with this uh, this socialist son of a bitch? Um, but in the efforts to uh, to get us to get us some cheaper drugs from Canada, what's your what's your take on the whole situation? And what would you give it? I uh, well, I think prescription drugs from Canada. You know, uh, when you have more competition, the freer the markets become. Um, so I, I actually I support the CR three. I think it's a. I mean, I don't like Bernie Sanders at all. But the, here he has some – there's some logic to it. So, um, you know, basically if we have a, a free market, we have a lot of pharmaceutical companies who are competing with each other and that they can compete with each other and lower the prices, I think it's a great thing. So I'm going to give him a Rand Paul us. Paul us! <laughs> Got to give it with gusto. Yeah, I I will agree with you there. I I'm all for uh, I'm all for Rand getting on board with this bill, and also Teddy Cruz uh, is also behind it. Your your uh, choice for what you thought was going to be the the presidential candidate for the GOP. Let's never forget. We may never forget. Um, but I, you know, it's like you you mentioned the competitiveness, and and one of the things that happens with the FDA. Is that and like the EpiPen is a great example of this. So one of the problems in in America is that the FDA does give companies monopolies. They give them through patents. Basically, they give them. They say, okay, you have X amount of years where nobody can compete with your product. But then what happens? And this is what what has happened with the EpiPen. People then go and they say, okay, well, we, now that it's expired, we have a competing product, but. Because of the lobbying and because of all these other regulations that are put in place by the FDA, now the cost to get into the market is so much higher and the regulations are so much more difficult. Like the EpiPen is a, is a relatively antiquated technology, to be honest. And the, and all the requirements to get anything that's like it into the market now are so ridiculous that it's almost impossible for anybody to compete with them. So yeah, if somebody from Canada doesn't have to go through all of those hoops, these flaming hoops of BS that the FDA is thrown out there, we can get cheaper alternatives, ship them in, then fantastic. All right, topic two, Obamacare, repeal and replace. Now, I don't want to talk specifically about Rand Paul because this is kind of, it's old news that Randy Pants, hashtag Randy Pants, that hashtag Randy Pants, uh, it was against the vote to repeal Obamacare. He wanted to delay it. Now, granted, I don't know, Johnny, have you seen this, the, all this hoopla that the, the liberals are putting out? Like 30, 30 million people lost health care. Have you seen these headlines? <laughs> oh, did I lose you? Shit, I think I lost you. Be the government's. Oh, G- hold on, Johnny. I couldn't hear you for a minute there. It, it, oh, yeah, uh, here's my mic. It got undone there. Okay, here, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw it to you again. Okay, sorry. So, okay, here we go. So, what, what do you think? I mean, have you seen all this? Have you seen all the hoopla about these 30 million people lost their health care coverage overnight and all these ridiculous headlines that kind of occupied Democrats and even Esquire had put out there? I, I did, and it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, Really, it's I don't believe it's the government's job to be in the healthcare industry to begin with. 
um, we should not replace it. We should just get rid of it. And I think a lot of this is going on where, you know, we should, you know, try to, oh, we're going to change it. We No, it's bullshit. I, what I think we should do is just not have it at all. So that's my, that's my take on it. But see, so so I, I could see that opinion because I'm of the same opinion overall that I'd like to see it all be torn down. Sure. However, seeing how it's in place already, is it, is it beneficial? And this is kind of the argument I've been having. I had a little bit of an interaction with somebody on, um, on the forum, the Lions of Liberty forum, which I mentioned people you could get to earlier, but, um, basically saying like, okay, so we've got this in place. People are now so dependent on it, used to it. Even though we want to get it out of there to do it all at once, which which they're not even doing, by the way, it's going to take them years to dismantle this thing. But if you whip it out and <laughs> whip it out, if you rip it out from under people, um, you know, is that just going to cause this massive backlash then where you say, OK, the next time that now four years down the road, it's going to be gone. Trump's going to be out of office. A Democrat's going to come in because all these people are going to be pissed off and motivated to vote. Uh, and it's just going to you know push it right back in if it's not done correctly, because that's that's what I worry about. I don't think so. I, I mean, I think there's a there's a lot of programs that is if you get people off it sooner, the, it's better. Um, I think people should start becoming more self-dependent. Um, there's that argument and I hear what you're saying, man. Um, a lot of people say, well, what would people do if you took away, you know, food stamps all of a sudden, um, you, you can, what if it, and I I'm with you on that because you have to have a heart, you know, I, I get it. You don't want to sound like an asshole, but in my opinion, I think you should get people off of it as soon as possible. I don't think it's a positive, right? It's dangerous. And w- what it does is it further relies people on the government. People are going to rely on the government. And that is exactly what we don't want. No, I think true. We, yeah, I mean, yeah. And we're also we're already past the tipping point, I think, from an I actual so. statistical standpoint, where like more than half the country is already on the dole. <laughs> you know? Sure, sure, man. And I, I just think that we should be moving forward. And I mean, if you really want to spread a libertarian message, I think, you know, uh, we shouldn't even be going down that road at all, period. Uh, I think we should tell people, you know, you can buy you know, healthcare anywhere in the world. I mean, if, if somebody, if, if a company in Canada or Pakistan wants to offer you insurance, by all means, you're going to get a great deal because they're competing with everyone else in this market. So, I mean, if you were in a car accident and you have your car insurance or any kind of health insurance in whatever country, they will be able to compete. And, you know, it's up to those companies to, to, you know, offer a great alternative to, what other company you're buying from currently. So there's always a competition uh, illuminating. I'm just looking for the word, but yeah, I, I don't think we should be going down that road. I don't think um, Obamacare is a good, is a good idea and kind of kowtowing to the establishment. I think that's what Rand Paul is doing. Yeah. Or maybe a little bit. I mean, so then what do you think? Did you see his, now he hasn't released his full plan yet, but what did you think of his kind of general outline that he gave, uh, as far as his ideas for how to quote unquote repeal and then replace? Well, I do like the idea that he is talking about, you know, associations to buy insurance, you know, um, they shouldn't be able to legislate people. Um, but again, we should look at people should automatically have the right to free association and where they buy their uh, insurance from. Um, and, and these things shouldn't be legislated. I, 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 I honestly have trouble with that. And I get what he, what he's doing. He's looking at it from a, Hey, we're, we're you know, we're going to work our way towards implementing you, you know, everyone can get together. We can all team up and create, you know, get an insurance plan together. Cause we're all together and we can make our late rates really low. That's great. And I applaud the idea, but again, we shouldn't be focusing in on that. And that's my that's my problem with it. Yeah, I got you. Well, it's, it's interesting you bring up the international market because nobody seems to be talking about that, looking internationally for healthcare coverage, because there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. Mm-mm. It's all just it's all just people. You're just sure. you're just insuring people. I mean, hell, you're like, uh, I give me a Chinese plan. They got a massive base of insurers sure. there. So give, give me the people with like four billion that are insured there. I'm sure they've got a with a pool that size. They'll take me and my American money. No problem. Absolutely. And same with, you know, yeah, I think that's where we get stuck in our, in our realm. I think this is where most Americans get stuck. They keep thinking, well, we got to buy us. I mean, how many times that, you know, I'm tired of seeing made in the USA stickers on a garbage can that I could pay (laughs) $10 cheaper 
for made in uh, Japan or China. It doesn't matter to me. I'll buy what's best for the best quality. I'm not going to support some bullshit American company just because it's made in America. Yeah, years of indoctrination through yeah, uh, television absolutely. commercials and, uh, and and state sponsored education. That's the way. It absolutely, happens. man. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We could buy. What, what if we could buy our our health insurance anywhere in the world? Holy shit, that would spark a lot of thoughts. People would be like, "Holy shit, I could buy in China." You know, I don't know what their coverage would be, what they would offer me, but it's still a cool option that. That's what we should be thinking internationally. Now, I'm not looking for like a one world government kind of thing. But what I'm saying is markets should be free to exchange and we should be able to buy health insurance anywhere we want. Yeah. I think the problem is, is that the government wants to get their, you know, wants to step in and regulate it and get some and, and scrape money off the top of it somehow, some way. Um, that's really the problem, brother. Well, they could sell. I'm sure no matter what we did, look, they could they could find ways to uh, to tax people trying to get through. Like Mark just mentioned this in the in Monday's show uh, for the Lands Liberty podcast. You know, you try to leave the country and denou- and renounce your citizenship. You still pay taxes just to get rid of your citizenship. So oh. the government could find a way to get taxes out of pretty much any th- any situation. So it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's so ridiculous. And I think our society, our culture, our world would be much better if we could just freely trade with whomever we want and exchange currencies and monies. And I think the world would be a better place. So I guess on this topic, I'll give it up. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you made a lot of good points, but I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a Paul Lust on my end because I feel okay. like, you know, because like what we were saying, I, I side with Rand in that I think you can't, even though we, we agree that the faster we get rid of it, the better. I do think it has to be something where you go, okay, we're going to take some steps in the right direction with it. And I think, you know, pushing for these healthcare savings accounts as he is giving, pushing back and getting tax breaks for medical coverage or, or uh, money spent on medical coverage is a big deal. And I think that, um, you know, he's, even though he's not doing everything all at once, it's still, in the right direction. So I'm going to okay, give, I, I give you that. I'll give you that. He is moving it in the right direction. I just think that it could be moved. It could be moved better. If, you know, I'm just saying if Ron Paul was there, he'd be like, fuck it. It's stupid. He, well, it. Oh yeah, for sure. He'd just be yeah. like, uh, give me, give me the ax. <laughs> right. Just chop just, the tree down. The shit off. It's stupid. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. How about uh third topic here? I got three on the, on the roster today. Um Speaking of, Things that let's say, let's say talking about doing things full bore. So Rand, you know, usually people put out these, you know, budgetary, uh, I don't know, recommendations and they've got their own plans to balance the budget, which I think nobody in government really wants to do except maybe Rand Paul. So he put uh, together a five year plan to balance the budget that also did include talking about our last topic, did include processes that would legislate away the Affordable Care Act and, and help to get rid of it. Now, it got defeated soundly. I mean, like nobody voted for it. Except maybe like ten people. Like Marco Rubio actually did. Old uh, old floppy ears Rubio. <laughs> he got behind it. But for the most part, you know, it got. I think like ten people, and then it got just trounced otherwise. But the bill in general. I mean, hey, five years to balance the budget is a pretty aggressive plan. Um, so, what do you think about that? What do you think about uh, Rand uh, at least putting it out there and making fighting the good fight? I think it's honorable and I think it's great. Um, why, why keep, you know, putting the country more further and further in debt? And so I applaud him for going out there and doing what he's doing on that. Um, actually, I believe that S- Bernie Sanders even supported him on this. Did he? I got to look at that. I, I, let me see here. I, I, maybe there I, was a, I, maybe there was... I misread that, but it, it said that Bernie was in support of this. That well, he should be right. Yeah, he did. You're right. Bernie Sanders urged deficit hawks ahead of the vote to support Paul. He yeah. was one of the uh, one of the supporters. You think they're having little meetings behind closed doors? I, I where- think those two are like in cahoots, and I think there's a little like bromance going on there. There might be. Rand's showing yeah. him how to iron his suits properly, and <laughs> and Bernie's showing Rand how to uh, how to properly get three or three plus houses and not work a day in the private sector, just sucking off the government teat. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, though. I, I I think what Bernie and well, what Rand Paul's doing on this, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just an unpopular idea. 
And this is really what it's all about. Uh, the, the, the guys in government are not going to support this because they want to keep spending money to keep their states happy. So, of course, it's not in their favor. Um, it's the hard right over the easy wrong in this situation. So, no, I don't think – I think that we should have a balanced a budget uh, within five years. I mean, that would be great. I'd do sooner. I'm a radical. You know, I would do sooner. But, <laughs> yes, I think it's it's awesome that he is taking – those steps towards a balanced budget. So I, I give him a Paul Us. Yeah, baby. Paul Lus. Yeah, I agree with you there, Paul Lus. And you know, I, I think uh I think it was I heard Stapleton talking a little bit about this budget idea is that he made a good point that uh the reason that many of these these senators might have voted it down was that they said, you know what? Five years is a little too short. We might we might start getting hit with some negative impacts of this during a voting cycle. So they like longer budgets because that way they don't have to worry about getting reelected in the middle. That's right. And <laughs> it's all about being reelected. Yeah. And that's what I really think it is, man. It's a corruption to the umpteenth power. Oh, totally. And, you know, Trump's probably complicit in that, too, because even though Trump, you know, he's he says he's going to try to uh, to rein in some of the budget. He also wants to expand the military. And our next topic, we're going to talk about General Mattis also wants to do that. But he wants to expand right. the military and all these infrastructure projects. And it's going to add, you know, nine, the projected nine trillion to the to the debt or whatever it is. And it's like so clearly Trump doesn't want to balance the budget either. No, of course not, because he's a moderate. He's yeah, really I mean, he came across like he was trying to do his thing where like, oh, I'm all about the people. But and I'm all about rights and building a wall and all this other bullshit. But he's full of shit, man. I mean, he's going to do everything Obama's done. And Obamacare is not going away. It's here to stay. So we should all just embrace it. This stupid positive right. I got it. Moving along. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, that what we we'll do General Mattis last because we're we're naturally segueing into this next topic. Then, which right is on. what you know, this Trump he came out and you know, even though he's saying he's in support of Rand Paul over not you know not waiting to or, or actually I should say not jumping the gun to just tear the uh, ACA down. But to your point, it doesn't look like he wants it to go anywhere that fast either way. Despite all the lip service he gave it. He recently said, well, I've got a plan I'm working on. I've got a plan I'm working on. And, uh, right, right. you know, and, and this plan, though, is insurance for everybody. So how the hell can you have insurance for everybody while still dismantling the ACA? And he said he still wanted to make sure that people with, like, I think pre-existing conditions would have coverage. It's like, you, it, they, you can't do it. It's impossible. Like, you can't pay for it. It just doesn't right. work. <laughs> That's right. And it, But it won't work. And again, he's going to go back and... You have all these guys who are all these lobbyists who are in support of Obamacare. And all he's going to do is say, well, we want to get rid of it, but not really. And it's not going away. They're going to try to change things. And it's just going to be another shit show, just like Obamacare or, or his uh, tweaks to it, so to speak. It, it It's again, it, we're looking back at. We, it's just bullshit, man. It's, uh, it's government getting involved where it doesn't need to be involved. And Trump is no savior. He's falling lockstep in line with everyone else, man. That's my opinion. Well, it's easily. And also during the campaign, when Trump was running, there were, we always had to play the game of, is Trump actually saying something he believes or is he just playing into the populist uh, concepts of the day and trying to rally people's blood up to get in the office and then do whatever the hell he wants? So this might be a clear indication that that it's more the latter, that he, you know, he wanted to have universal health care back when he back when he was a Democrat. And now it seems like that's coming back around again. So let's see what he's sworn in. He might be like, you know what? I love it. I love Obamacare. Screw it. We're going to make it even bigger and better, you know, and just make it universal. Try That's to what he's going to do. I it's mean, granted, with GOP it, Congress, they won't be able to do it, but he can get in the way and not sign bills that would get it, tear it out, you know? No, he's not going to do that because it's not part of the plan. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not doing all conspiracy here, but I mean, the, the lobbyists, there's too much money in it and it it's bought and paid for already. So it, why would you do that? It's not in his best interest. Well, and I could see maybe like if there was enough shit. money behind like- the concept of opening it up, opening up the healthcare exchanges through uh, or, or getting rid of the exchanges and opening up so you could go anywhere in the states for healthcare. If there's enough money behind that, I could see then people saying like, "Oh, sure." But you there's know, a select them. few, Brian. Yeah, there's a select few that are involved in this, and this is the, what the problem is. I mean, it's crony capitalism, 100. percent 
Well, that's without a doubt. I mean, hey, the whole healthcare industry as a whole is crony capitalism to absolutely, sure. and it absolutely. has been for that. You know, even before Obamacare, it's been that way for the last twenty five, thirty years, or whatever it is. Yep. So, yeah. But, so I give it. I, I do. We get a rating on this. You could Trump. give it. Yeah, we could do a little Trump or dump. I give it a dump, and I also give it a dump. Double dump the deuce. Bam. <laughs> Double deuce. So we'll have to see, though. It's going to be coming out. You know, this is a topic I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot uh, going forward because God knows when this plan actually comes out. I mean, I still haven't seen one plan of Trump's that's an actual plan yet. I mean, he's days from taking office and there's still no actual plans that he talked about that you can look at it and see actual breakdowns of anything anyway. So we'll see when his health care plan actually comes out, just like we'll see when his tax plan actually ever comes out. I don't think anything's going to change, man. I don't think anything will change with Trump. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that I I, I liked Hillary more than Trump, but I mean, fuck, man, nothing's going to change. No. And it's sad. But at least I mean, at least we don't have to look at Hillary. And that's, that's true. That's true to me anyway. And yeah. and we got to enjoy which I ate up with a spoon. I am still eating up with a spoon. The liberals just going insane and tearing their tearing their hair out and gnashing their teeth at every given moment of the day. Uh, that's right. For every reason. So that makes me happy to see. That makes me happy, too. So I'm with you on that. Brother. <laughs> so you gotta, okay, yes. Thank God for small miracles. Yep. 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 All right, last topic today, since we hit that one. So General Mattis, I, I don't know how much you've been keeping an eye on, on all these Senate hearings going on, but General Mattis is uh, is the latest one to go through the, the ringer. And, I mean, I, w- when I first read about the guy, you, you hear these really funny kind of quotes from him, you know, basically he's, you know, coming with tears in his eyes, begging you, uh, you know, I've got all these weapons and men and I don't want to use them, but if you do, so help me God, I'll smash the shit out of you or whatever. It's, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Right. But he's got these really funny quotes, but then he's got these other ones that are, you know, it's basically like we should not, you know, he, we should go out of our way to not overly uh, use our military unless we have to, but then if we have to, it has to be excessive, just force where they know, you know, never fuck with us again, period. So I was like, okay, I'm cautiously optimistic about this guy. He seems like he's a military man through and through, but at least he's got some sense in him. He's not a guy that's going to be actively starting wars. But some of the stuff that came up during the hearing today makes me really, really concerned. Um, I mean, I'll throw out one that I that I read that, I, and you know, and you can re- react to this, but. The, the one that really upset me was that he's saying that, you know, America's military is not big enough to deter China and Russia and also saying that Russia is America's biggest threat. So, I mean, what do you think about those two comments? Uh, man, I mean, <clears throat> I'm a little confused about him. Um, the, he said some cool stuff like he has honestly said some good stuff, but he's also said some bad stuff like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess foreign policy and all these ideas of foreign policy is really complicated. And as a libertarian, I mean, of course we want peace, you know, um, but I don't know. I, I, he sounds kind of like a, a, a hawk in certain sides, in certain ways, but then he also sounds like a dove. Yeah. I mean, he's all about building peace between Israel and the Arab nations. So that right there was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Um, I like him. In a, in a way, because I was in the military and there's a gut in me. It's like, fuck him, kill him, you know, but not really. <laughs> uh, but he seems like he's all about not going to war at one side. And then yet he seems like he is about going to war. Yeah. Um, well, that's the same thing. I, I, deal with, I, I have that same conundrum. It's like he's he's very he's like you in comedy. You know, he's <laughs> at one yeah. side. He wants to just say, fuck everybody. Uh, and the other side, he says, no, no, no. Peace, brother. It, you know, it uh, must be peace. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but like, no, but totally, he said a quote like fear, honor and interest always seems that or, or always seems to be the reasons why nations go to war. Right. And I think that's very, that's, you know, very clever, you know, very honorable of him to even mention a quote like that. But here's some things I do like about him is he keeps talking about the republic, which I give him credit for because I've never heard any general talk about the republic. No, quote. me neither. And he also mentions the Constitution. He's like, you know, the Congress has the power, you know, that really makes the decisions for war. So there's a lot of restraint about Mattis, you know, General Mattis that I I do like. And, you know, he's he said some comments, you know, I'm not 100 percent behind the guy, but 
there is some like things that he says that kind of take give you a left hook, dude. Yeah. You're like, what the hell did he say that for? That's kind of weird. And then he'll say something great. And then he'll say something horrible. Well, it's kind of like, you know, it kind of reminds you of Patton a little bit, although Patton was full of all the time, but he's kind of that warrior poet in a way. It, it, he is. There's, a, there's I, a real depth to the man. And like you were saying, he does, he, he kind of throws you for a loop at times with, with some does. of the things that he says and some of his, his point of views. And the, yeah, it's great to hear him say the Congress, the, the power to declare war lies with Congress. So maybe he's a guy that's going to push back against all these executive orders that put us into, a, I mean, undeclared wars for years. I mean, God, we're Absolutely. still at war in Afghanistan. That's not a war officially. That's true. And, uh, I think we should be getting out of those conflicts. And what we should also be doing is shouldn't be fucking with the Russians. Yeah. Well, uh, that, but that's the thing is it's uh, you mentioned that quote about interests and he mentioned that he says, yeah, we should be, we should work with the Russians when we have shared interests, but we have to defend when those interests come at under threat or something. So he's clearly not, not uh, backing away from Russia, but at the same time, you know, we're talking about these, you know, get these undeclared wars that are ongoing in the Middle East. Here's one of the downsides that came out of these, uh, the sessions today too is that, or yesterday is that he wants to double down on ISIS. He's, you know, his, his standpoint on ISIS is he wants to get in there and really just blow the living hell out of them and kind of end it. Like what I was saying earlier, get in there and like, if you're going to do it, do it full bore. So he wants to go hardcore on ISIS, but then he wants to get out of the Middle East. So it's like, it's it's, where we go. He contradicts himself. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I, I, I'm confused as you are on the guy. Like he is a, he, oh God, he, he just racks my brain. Like he'll say some cool things. Like he was talking about gay, gay people in the military. He's mm-hmm. like, I don't care where they sleep at night. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm like, I applaud him on that. I was like, none of your fucking business. Yeah. Especially for a guy. He's an older dude. I mean, he's probably what, yeah. 65. Yeah, he's, yeah. So he'll say something like libertarian, but then he'll contradict it with some warmongering bullshit. And then come back and say some peaceful things. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, 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 I want to read this. I want to read this quote actually, because it's a great quote and I'm glad you brought it up about, uh, cause he was asked something about don't ask, don't tell. And yeah, he said, I, you know, I had hundreds of Marines who have to be women serving in my 23,000 person division. I put them right in the front lines with everybody else. And he, when asked about protections for LGBTQ service members, he said, frankly, Senator, I've never cared about two consenting adults and who they go to bed with. Sure. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I think it's great. But like the thing is like one one thing I worry about is is cyber policy because you know what that means more NSA spying yeah yeah you're saying that the U S has no real cyber doctrine and that sure. needs to be built up and all that yeah but I, I guess my like overall opinion of him Brian is that he's a good intentional he, he's a good statist like <laughs> yeah, I think he really believes this shit really makes a difference. But I think he's going in there with good intentions. That's a, maybe so, that should be an ongoing uh, a part of the show. You can you can it was, it was your idea. You maybe you could take it and run with it, or otherwise I'll take it. But the uh, the good statists list. Yeah, <laughs> I think he might be a good statist. I mean, um, he doesn't know any better. Let's give it to him. Like he's an idiot. He doesn't know. Like he hasn't been ex- exposed to libertarian ideas. But like you could see deep down that the guy's like, I really want peace, but no. I must keep my job. Yeah. Well, so, hey, here's like, a question you can for see you. the conflict in the man. Yeah, totally. Which is which is great to see. Better that than you know, you see these neocons out there like like the Rubios of the world, uh sure. trying to force who was it, uh Tillerson into calling Putin a war criminal. It's like that's gonna help things. Why? Why do you want him to call him right. a war criminal? For what? Everybody's a war criminal. The USA is war criminals. Yes, we are. God. So uh but here's a question for you then. You know, yeah. as overwhelmingly the military always kind of tends libertarian when uh when voting time comes around do we think mattis would have voted ron paul no 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 i don't i don't i think he's a status i mean i I think he's a good status but i don't think he knows any better so i don't think i think ron paul would come across as too extreme for him yeah yeah i really do he's kind of like a marco rubio kind of guy Oh, don't compare him to Marco Rubio. You're going to make me like him a hell of a lot less, man. <laughs> don't, don't, don't put no, that, in, don't don't put that a, image in my mind of the two. Ron Paul general. No, <laughs> by any stretch. No, I don't think so, man. No, all right. Well, still, I, I share, I, I share your optimism towards the man. I also think he is, yeah, a quote unquote good statist. Uh, I hope there's more. I hope he errs more towards peace than towards zeal with the military interventionism. Um, 
But yeah, we can only just keep our fingers crossed that he does push back against Trump in, in a lot of different ways. I mean, I like that he pushed back when they asked him about the Iran uh, deal that Obama made with, with regards to their nuclear weapons. And Mattis said, look, it's not perfect, but I wouldn't tear it up, which I agree with. That was one of the few things I liked that Obama did was, you know, if, I mean, hell yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just stop trying to start nuclear war with Iran, please. Even though even though they don't have the nuclear war, they don't have the nukes uh, supposedly yet. Um, just knock it off. Just leave yeah. it alone. Stop poking the, the beehive. Yeah. And I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, but he's a, he's a funny guy. I don't really know where he stands. He's wishy washy on his ideas. But one side of me likes him. He looks like a nice guy. You look like you were like, I want to drink a beer with that guy. Yeah. But but then at the same time, you know, I don't know where really where his you know his heart is. You know, we don't know what he what he, he was a fucking marine for Christ's sake. I mean, fuck. That could be a good thing though. You know what? You know <laughs> I don't what know, man. man. Now here's why I'll tell you because if he's a if he's a real you know died in the wool, just a man who's served his whole life, who who really you know. Cares about but, his Marines, cares, cares about the people under his command. He's not going to be one of those guys that says, no, you know what? Let's just go. Let's just go bomb people. Let's go, go out there to go out there. He's going to be actually thinking about the human capital that he's going to be expending and throwing away. And he doesn't want to get people killed unnecessarily. So let's hope that he's got that in him and that, you know, all this, all this that he's putting out there about his troops and, you know, caring about them and, and, and his lust for peace over war. But if we're going to go to war, we're going to go big war. Let's hope that's all true. Let's hope Brian, if that's what his core I, I belief is, that, and I think we'll be all right. Brian, I didn't mean like he's a Marine, like it's a bad thing. I just no, 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 a, no. I know. I was an Army guy. I was a soldier, so we have this competition with Marines. <laughs> so it had nothing to do with the fact he was a Marine. No, no, I know, I know. That he was a Marine, and fuck the Marines. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, if I you're a, a Marine, you can write to Johnny Rocket at the JohnnyRocketLaunchpad.com. <laughs> <laughs> don't no. send me your hate mail no i wasn't no. saying that you were i wasn't saying that you were shitting on marines but i'm just saying no. in general though, like any armed service if he's a guy that uh you know if, if he's a real military guy and really cares about the people under his command though that's a good thing rather than just a guy that's that you know is going to view them as um you know tools tools yeah agenda. exactly right like zap brannigan on futurama i'll send wave after wave of troops into them Gilbots? a trifle it was simply a matter of outsmarting them Wow, I never would have thought of that. You see, killbots have a preset kill limit. Knowing their weakness, I sent wave after wave of my own men at them until they reached their limit and shut down. Kiff, show them the medal I won. That's right. That's yeah. right. No, and I hope so too. I mean, he's obviously, you know, a brother in arms. I was in, I, I was in the military for 10 years, so I, I understand. Um, I think he is. I think he cares. I really do. So I'll, I'll give him that. So based on what I've, read about him he doesn't want to send soldiers or or marines or whomever in there just to die yeah. he wants there to be a cause and i think you know do i think he's perfect no, by no stretch of the imagination but i do think that he there is that little nugget of liberty somewhere and it may have him second guess himself and maybe not put uh innocent people in harm's way so let's hope. I'm with you, man. And I I like that. That's that's going to be a new bumper sticker. Second guess yourself with liberty. I like that's it. That's right. It's a good catchphrase. <laughs> and a good statist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> every good statist second guesses himself with liberty. That's right. Every good statist, every good statist will second guess himself. I'm going to put I, that on a T-shirt. We're going to have T-shirts coming out very soon. That's going to be on a T-shirt. Give yeah. you a finder's fee. Did you guys, have you seen the Johnny Rocket Launchpad T-shirt, man? No, I got I, I to check it out. Where can I find that? Libertyindustries.us. Look at that. And you All can right. buy them. And I think you can get a, like a discount if you put in Rocket. I think you can get those shirts for like 20 bucks instead of 26 something. Nice. They're expensive and they're nice because we made sure that they're nice. So, well, I need a shirt either to uh, to wear around proudly or to swaddle myself in like a diaper when I finally start drinking again because I'm going yeah, to go hard cool. have... when I come back on board. Brian, they have skulls on them. And you can't like any T-shirt, and, and it's like a gr a dark gray. 
but it has skulls. So anything with skulls on it, dude, is cool. All right. I'll take it's it. It's like you pirate are... black market kind of thing. From you know, your mouth to I... pirate God's ears. <laughs> that's right. That's right, brother. Hey, thank you so much, Johnny, for uh, for joining us. Guys, Johnny Rocket, uh, again, johnnyrocketlaunchpad.com. You can listen to their podcast also. is It's awesome. It's a rock and roll podcast. Uh, it, it's great. What can I say? Uh, one of my favorite guests. So again, thank you so much for joining me on Electric Liberty Land here, man. Brian, thank you so much. I'm honored to be on your third show. Yes. So that means, again, you can find this at lionsofliberty.com forward slash ELL3 for all the show notes for this here program. Just want to remind everybody to check us out at Lions of Liberty on Twitter. Of course, we're on Facebook, Lions of Liberty. Just type that on in. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, give us a nice review on iTunes, a brand new show right here. Hey, why don't you write a review? I'm putting my time in here, my love, my passion. And uh, that'll do it for us, guys. So from uh, from Electric Liberty Land, always stay plugged into Liberty. (laughs) 